The Philippine government has confirmed that the second phase of its military modernization plan has been approved by President Rodrigo Duterte, clearing the way for the Southeast Asian nation to replace some of its elderly and obsolete equipment. The confirmation by Philippine Department of National Defense spokesman Arsenio Andalong on Wednesday will now allow the country to implement sorely needed recapitalization of some of its equipment, the oldest of which dates back to World War II. Andalong also confirmed that the budget for the five-year Horizon 2 modernization program, which will run from 2018 to 2022, has been set at some 300 billion Philippine pesos, US $5.6 billion. According to sources in the Philippines, this amount will be split into $890 million for the Army, $1.44 billion for the Navy, and $2.61 billion for the Air Force, with the rest of the budget going to the military's general headquarters and the government's arsenal. The list of equipment the Philippines is seeking to acquire under the Horizon 2 program includes multi-role fighters, airlifters, maritime patrol aircraft, and heavy-lift helicopters for the Air Force, while the Army is seeking more artillery, light tanks and multiple rocket launchers. The budget for the Air Force includes an amount set aside for combat utility helicopters. A contract signed in February with the Canadian government for Bell 412 helicopters was cancelled after Canadian politicians raised concerns about the Duterte administration's human rights record in its ongoing war on drugs. The Philippines is reportedly now seeking to acquire the helicopters through a commercial sale, while an alternative option of buying the South Korean Korea Aerospace Industries Surian helicopter has also been floated. The Navy's priority will be the acquisition of two corvettes and a similar number of multi-role offshore patrol vessels. Other items on its wish list include more anti-submarine helicopters and amphibious assault vehicles, the latter for the country's Marine Corps. Andalong also confirmed that the Navy wants to acquire an unspecified number of submarines under Horizon 2. However, this could prove difficult under a limited budget and because the country's has no experience operating and sustaining a submarine capability. The Philippines, which is an archipelagic nation made up of more than 7,600 islands, faces a myriad security challenges ranging from disputes with China and other Southeast Asian countries over the ownership of islands and features in the South China Sea, to ongoing insurgencies with communist guerrillas and Muslim separatists that includes Islamic State-linked militants. In May 2017, the latter seized control of the city of Marawi in the southern Philippine island of Mindanao, leading to a five-month siege by government forces, which resulted in large parts of the city being badly damaged during operations to recapture it. During the operation, the United States, which has a mutual defense treaty with the Philippines, provided intelligence and surveillance assistance to government forces with its manned and unmanned aircraft. President Rodrigo Duterte recently decided to bankroll the second phase of the 15-year Armed Forces of the Philippines AFP, modernization program. The plan for the program involves three five-year phases, or horizons. The first horizon, which began in 2013 and ended in 2017, involved purchases of military hardware, mainly for internal security challenges, though it included some big-ticket air and naval acquisitions for external defense. The second horizon, which will be implemented from 2018 to 2022, entails an ambitious transition period, wherein the AFP will shift its arms acquisitions away from internal security to territorial defense. This will require a huge allocation of 300 billion pesos, about $5.6 billion. This substantial financial outlay will enable the Philippine Army to acquire towed and self-propelled howitzers, multiple rocket launch rocket systems, ground mobility vehicles, and even light tanks. The big ticket items that the AFP will fund, however, will be for the Philippine Navy and Philippine Air Force. The Navy will procure two more missile capable frigates, two are currently being constructed by Hyundai Shipbuilding Corporation and will be delivered in 2020 amphibious assault vehicles, anti submarine helicopters, multi role vessels, and submarines.
The acquisition of submarines was originally planned for the Third Horizon, 2023 to 2028. But the current Navy Chief, Vice Admiral Robert Empedrid, lobbied for the immediate inclusion of diesel-electric submarines in Horizon 2. He argued that undersea operations are a trend in naval warfare and its lack of submarines would disadvantage the AFP in any future conflict. The Department of Defense DND, supported Empedrid, saying that diesel-electric submarines would be a great equalizer in the country's naval arsenal. The DND declined to provide an exact number of submarines that the Navy will buy, but said that it will be more than one. To show it is serious about the project, the Navy has formed a submarine group that is now sending personnel abroad for training in undersea operations. The Navy estimates that its acquisition of submarines, including building the vessels, training officers and crews, and the provision of support facilities, will take seven to ten years. The Air Force's big-ticket item will be two squadrons of multi-role fighters. Air Force planners have yet to detail the exact number of fighters or a specific budget for the acquisition, but the Air Force is reportedly inclined to buy European-made fighters, possibly the Gripen from Sweden's Saab. President Duterte also recently approved the acquisition of an additional 12 F-A-50 lead-in fighter planes from South Korea to complement the 12 already purchased during the first horizon of the AFP modernization program. Former President Benigno Aquino originally launched the AFP modernization program as part of an effort to challenge China's expansion in the South China Sea. But after Duterte's election in 2016, the new president suggested he would pursue a policy of gravitating closer to China while ignoring territorial defense and focusing again on internal security. Since late 2016, Duterte has pursued a policy of appeasement toward China by downplaying the disputes in the South China Sea in return for promised Chinese investment in the Philippines. He quickly set aside the July 2016 ruling from a tribunal at the Permanent Court of Arbitration, which found in favor of Manila and against many of Beijing's claims in the South China Sea. Duterte then went to Beijing in October 2016, where he told Chinese President Xi Jinping that his term would be the springtime of Philippine-China relations and returned home with $15 billion in investment pledges, which remained largely unrealized. But despite the rapprochement in Philippines-China relations, Duterte's decision to finance the second horizon of the AFP modernization program suggests that he will continue the Philippine military's shift from internal to territorial defense. There seem to be two major reasons for this decision. First, Duterte needs to maintain support from the military, especially as he seeks to shift the country away from its historical reliance on the United States and toward a closer relationship with China, driven by economic concessions. He also needs to shore up military support in light of the resilience of domestic security challenges, as shown by the five-month siege of Marawi City by Islamic militants in 2017.